he was speaking from the unity with God, which he didn't believe he knew. Just like if you go to your father and you say, Father, I, I, I don't have any money, please, could you, could you send me some money? You phone your father, could you send some money for me? I need it urgently. And he says, Okay, tell me what to, give me your account, give me your account. Then he says, Okay, I will send it. Then immediately your heart is at peace because you have that trust. Not you don't believe, I believe he will send it. No, you know. Already you start to say to people, Okay, fine, now we can go and get the things because my father is sending it because you have that trust. That is trust. There are some people who cannot trust. They just won't trust something inside. Say, no, I can't trust. Until I see it in my hands, I won't. And uh, they are said also to be wise because somewhere it says, you know, a promise is a comfort only to a fool. <laughs> They're saying like this: that don't live on promises. So it can seem contradic- contradictory. In one case, just say the word, but that must be someone who you know in your heart, you trust so so fully in your heart. But if you are only accepting promises from people who flatter you, then you will soon find out that uh, there was a mistake. You don't live in promises. So all these things point to a kind of uh, um, a flexibility, an intuition, uh, a, a sensitivity, uh, a maturity, an inner maturity that uh, is immeasurable. It just springs out of this. And one thing I would want to emphasize more and more is not only the wisdom factor of spirituality, but actually the trust, the love and the faith factor also is important. Because otherwise you can learn things and you know it in your mind, you feel really clear, really sure, but you don't have any power. You understand? You don't have any power because you have no trust. You can know these things, when I'm speaking now, we know these things in the mind. You can you can speak eloquently about it. But when it comes down to the on the ground, we don't have that trust. You don't step forward, and when the day come to fight, you will not fight. You say, no, 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 I can't fight. I'm not this type of person, and so on. There's a time when you have to stand up and you fight. Uh, because that's the time. And you do this because you trust and you know that life calls you to this. Can you drop yourself? This is why I keep asking, can we drop ourselves? Because if you are constantly holding yourself, there's lots of places you will not go, there's lots of boundaries you will not cross. So therefore, your knowledge will be strong only intellectually. But it won't have the you won't have the potency, you won't have the authority, because inside it hasn't touched trust, it hasn't touched trust, touched faith. And this, I would say, is one of the uh, what obstacles, the possible obstacles to a path you may say like uh, Advaita Vedanta uh, uh, inquiry or something that it can seem entirely mental, that you can have the understanding of this. But then life draws you into situations to, to activate and to bring what you know with your mind into your body and your heart to express it. This is why this manifest life, the terrestrial expression of life, is also very important, because it is the testing ground for what you claim to know internally. Life will bring you into situations to see if what you say here is how you can act here, so that your behavior and your thought they are one. Your so-called knowledge and faith are together, and trust. Whereas uh, foolish people think, 
or knowledge is enough, faith is not necessary. Faith is to do with some lesser thing. They don't know the power of faith, the beauty of faith, the greatness of faith, actually. Because human beings are instinct with faith. Faith makes us do many things. Trust makes us do many things. We are living by trust. When you go into a restaurant, you have a trust that the, 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 the chef has not uh, been blowing his nose in his hand and sort of like cooking the food with his hand or going to the toilet and not washing his hand or not poisoning your food. When you get on a bus, you have a trust that the driver is, hasn't had a, a quarrel with his, with his wife or, or with her husband and decide, today I'm going to crash this thing. When you fly on an aeroplane, you have a trust that somehow this uh, your pilot is not drunk or some you have a, you, we have a trust because life is trust but somehow we can have a sense of mistrust carrying the weight of mistrust inside the heart now i say not necessarily that one has to go trust trust towards uh, people or mistrust there can be a kind of neutrality, but this neutrality is not dead. It has. To, it also has to be a hard quality, neutrality. If you follow what I mean, it's not an excuse to avoid decision making. It is a very very high posture, but it is a hard quality. It's not just a mind quality. And if we are living only in mind quality. You see, something life will show you inadequate. Because life also, if you have not a personal guru, life is your guru. It will keep on bringing you to the places to dip your face in the water of your own of your own claims to see if you can st- if your heart and your life will stand up to what you claim is true. So this is a magnificent life, a magnificent opportunity to play this game. All of us came into this world to play this game somehow. I can put it like that. And you can be in this game for a very long time. And you can come out of this game. Or at least go beyond. Not be a victim of the game.